Hello, welcome to Court Games, a Legend of the Five Rings podcast funded by the Legend of the Five Rings Discord community Patreon. This podcast will focus on the role-playing game stories and lore for Legend of the Five Rings. I'm Kova. And I'm Kikita Kaori. And uh, we're recording here at the very beginning of 2021 with a overview of The Careful Gardener. That's a, the, a new fiction by Annie Vandermeer. And uh, the summary is not very long, but there's a lot of lore nuggets, mostly cross-references, because this refers to a whole bunch of stuff that's happened in the past. So strap yourselves in. <laughs> we are with Ikoma Ujiaki, who is the lead diplomat and courtier of the Lion Clan, and as it turns out, secret mastermind behind a whole bunch of stuff. He is furious at the crane, and particularly Kikita Yoshi's ascension to the regent following the ousting of Baishi Shoju by Miramoto Hitomi after he was implicated by the Emerald Champion. He moves to create a confrontation with Yoshi, accusing the crane of blowing up Kyuden Kakita and treating Yoshi with disrespect. Yoshi has Ujiaki thrown out of court and declares the lion must no longer attack the unicorn and the crane. Ujiaki then goes to visit Baishi Shoju in captivity to initiate an alliance with the goal of removing Kakita Yoshi from power. Indeed. So, um, he didn't quite pull the lion pride brawler punching somebody in court technique, but I can't say he didn't get close. No, no, he did He did literally think to himself about channeling his inner Matsu, so it's pretty much what he was doing. <laughs> right. Um, so, various, various stuff. Um he talks a lot about uh, Yoshi crowing under heaven a lot. He, he keeps saying, under heaven, under heaven. So under heaven, other than the obvious phrase, is actually um, a concept primarily from China, but also in Japan. In China, it's called chensa, and in Japan, it's tenka. It's a common phrase used to basically describe the whole world. It, he's basically saying that Yoshi is just talking about the empire this and the empire that, or the world this and the world that, um, which is kind of what you would expect him to be doing as regent. Uh, but Uji is thinking here with a little bit of wordplay that it means like he's put himself on level with heaven or something like that. Yeah. Uh, another thing we see is there's a wax seal on the invitation with a flower pressed into the seal. Now, the game of letters often uses flowers as part of the code by which it hidden it communicates hidden messages. Uh, although Ujiaki in this case does not look at the flower, which might have given him some hint or clue or something. But uh, the game of flowers does come up quite a bit in this one, so it's interesting that he doesn't actually bother to look at this one. <laughs> That's true. Um, so he in the story, uh, Ujiaki thinks, I will not let him forget. I will not let Yoshi forget. Um, and this is a callback to Yoshi's story, which is Court Games, where he repeatedly swears on the Shion flower, um, which is the flower of remembrance, a flower of remembrance. He, he swears, I will not forget. And in that story, he is remembering that he won't forget Doji Satsume and the necessity of being strong for the sake of the empire. Um, in that same story, uh, Toshimoko is talking about not forgetting um, their sister. Uh, so this, this phrase, don't forget or I won't forget, it's even on Yoshi's card in the LCG. Um, yeah, is very associated with uh, with Yoshi. So Ujiaki thinking to himself, "I will not let him forget," is very funny because that's like, not forgetting is all about what Yoshi's about. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I I don't think it's a deliberate callback on Ujiaki's part. Oh but yeah, it's he all, wouldn't it, it, know. It, yeah, it's but it but it's it's a callback, uh, you know, themically in that sense. Yeah. Uh, we meet uh, some 
kind of supporting cast of Ujiaki's TV show, I suppose. <laughs> Uji- His pride. Ujiaki's pride. Yeah, Ujiaki's pride. And there are some people we've seen before. I'm going to start with Matsu Hiroru, who is Matsu Tsuko's brother. So she's the one who is currently, well, up until her condition became unknown when Kyuden Kikita blew up. So I'm not quite sure what she's up to. But up until that, she was declaring herself to be champion and rampaging all over Crane Lands. So this is her younger brother. In old lore, he was Akoda Kage's student and a lion who's willing to get into very, uh, shall we say, ninja-ish territory for Kage. <laughs> but all we know about him here is he's Matsutsuko's brother. Speaking of Akoda Kage, he's here, so he wasn't just Hiroru's sensei, but also Toturi and Arasos and Doji Kuanans, which is a first official confirmation that Doji Kuanan was in fact trained by the lion. Because that was true in the old law, but it hasn't actually been said out loud in mm-hmm. new law. We last saw Akodo Kage in the fiction Tactical Maneuvers, uh, being played by Doji Kozunobu. And uh, at one point, Ujiaki even like rags on Kage for being played by the fox. That was funny. Yes, I'm, I'm, it's, it's just that Kage just didn't have um, a Kenshin Zen available to do his staring for him. Everyone should. <laughs> Everyone should. And finally, Kitsumotsu, mm-hmm. who's a young general with a crush on Matsutsuko, which appears to be most of them, given how readily they just kind of lined up behind her when she said, let's overthrow <laughs> the champion and go ham on everything. But anyway, um, we saw him in Raw the Lioness. He is confirmed to have been at Kyuden Kikito until just a few days ago. And he was the one who escorted Kakito Ichiro to the capital just recently from Kyuden Kakita. So that's, that's, this is Ujiaki's kind of cohorts. I think the timing is really interesting on Kitsumoto's actions. So Ichiro, who is Yoshi's nephew, not his son. Uh, some people seem to get it confused. It's Toshimoko's son. Um, he has been at Kyuden Kakita when it was captured. And then when he was captured there originally he was sent to the capital in Odasan Uchi and at this point in the time it's about four months since Kyuden Kikita has been taken so that means that Ichiro went back to Kyuden Kikita probably escorted back by the lion uh, in order to take further messages um he's a valuable hostage and um yeah, the lion didn't just release him when they sent him to Odasanuchi. Mm. Uh, and having the message actually carried by a Kikita that is high rank means that the lion is more likely to consider to be trustworthy, which is why they're using yeah. Ichiro as the messenger rather than just taking the message themselves. In this story, offered to parlay with Kikita Yoshi. And in her original declaration on conquering Kyuden Kikita, she said he, he would meet her on the battlefield, which doesn't really imply a parley, unless it's a very creative uh, lion kind of parley. Um, mm. So it could be that Ujiaki is saying that this because... Uh, Ichiro and Motsu had orders to, you know, speak to Yoshi to arrange a parley for Kuden Kikita, and then Uji blew up the castle before that parley ever actually got got made. Um, if it, if that was the case, so if an actual offer of parley was made, and Ichiro and Motsu carried that message, um, then it. Only came in the last day or two, uh, which means that it happened in the same day or two that Totori resigned, Hitomi was taking the capital, Yoshi was made regent, all of that. So you could see why Yoshi didn't pick up and leave the capital to go parley as soon as hearing the message, even if he was going to at all. Things are a little busy in Otisan Uchi. I mean, I'm assuming that it, this wasn't some mistake that someone. You know, someone got the times wrong and assumed that it that this is in fact just 
Ichiro coming to the capital for the first time. Somehow the next... <laughs> yeah, and somehow the very next day, and, and that kind of thing. I'm not... Sh- I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't have like like a map in front of me. You just kind of work out the distances and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's a, it's a. We've got confirmation from several places. There's about two days from Kudenkikita to Odasanuchi at the most. So, <laughs> so with it taking that distance, uh, you know, it just. The the message originally came from Ichiro the day after the emperor was killed. Because yeah. we see yeah. that in... That's already mm-hmm. happened. So this has got to be some other return from Ichiro of Motsu. Yeah, yeah. It it actually makes a lot of sense. That, it, that it, you kind of, we're releasing you from, you know, you, we have captured your castle, but we're releasing you to be our messenger back and forth. That does make a lot of mm-hmm. sense. But uh, yeah, it just kind of like had they had they left a couple of days later, kind of they might have get caught exploded. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, going back to Ujiaki's kind of evil mastermind, engineer the marriage arrangement with Alton Sinai, with a an Ikoma, with that kind of and all traditional forms will be observed. The whole point being for Alton Sinai to go. Wait a minute, that means I'd have to give up everything. How dare you? The marriage is off. So the lion can then go, oh, look at them being so completely unreasonable. Let's have a war. And all that kind of stuff. (laughs) And he also engineered the depleted stores of the lion that caused the lion troops to go hungry in cold harvest to make them need to get supplies from the unicorn and specifically from the unicorn villagers to provoke conflict and to have a go at damaging the Unicorn Crane Alliance. He manipulated Suko to be in conflict with Toturi, but did not expect her to go completely Matsu and claim the championship. Although he, he does kind of go, well, that actually worked out quite well. I wish I'd thought of it. <laughs> Matsu got a Matsu. Absolutely. Yeah, he didn't, quite, he didn't quite work out how Matsu she was going to Matsu. And it turned out very, very Matsu. <laughs> Um, it had said, although the depleted stores of lions and the, the so the lack of field supplies to the lion troops was engineered. Apparently, there have this is only an exaggeration. There are indeed problems with their stores and their supplies, but not so bad as he made out. So he, he was exaggerating the problem to make things worse. He does seem to see the lion conquest going beyond their traditional territories. So. He is ambitious, which is very interesting. We do not, but although although we've got all this kind of I'm a secret devious mastermind stuff, there is a particular mm-hmm. type of devious mastermindery that is not yet confirmed, but might still be true. <laughs> so we're going to see in the next couple of in the next couple of fiction. There's been there's been some more hints about that. So like, <laughs> So uh, Uchiaki does blame uh, Toshi Rambo going to the Scorpion on Yoshi. Uh, it is still in mm. Scorpion lands. It should be noted. Yoshi did not rescind that. Yeah. Um, yeah, he yeah. could have, I suppose. Which, well, maybe because I think there's right, and generally, if an emperor says something, it's true. Mm-hmm. Or at least that everyone has to act that way because that's that's the the social understanding. But a, a later emperor can say it is not true, mm-hmm. or slightly more accurately, they can say it is now changed. The situation is now different. Obviously, my illustrious ancestor was correct at the time, mm-hmm. but it's now different. But a, a regent might not be able to, or might find it more difficult because they are supposed to be a caretaker. Mm-hmm. And so that, so he might not, he may, he, he possibly might not be able to, or he might not feel that he has the political capital to do it just yet. That that is a possibility. But yeah, he certainly hasn't yet. Mm-hmm. Whether or not he can is an interesting thing. Ujiaki calls Kyuden Kakita a lion monument. That's funny. Which is interesting because they held it for like yeah a couple four of months. Days. <laughs> no, that's not quite true. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is actually kind of similar to, you can almost see it similar to what they feel about Toshi Rambo, because apparently the timeline's a little confused, mm-hmm. but it was a lion thing, 
then the crane held it for some generations and then the lion had it but only for a little while and then they say, but it's ours. It has been ours forever. It's been yours for five minutes, mate. <laughs> well, a little, little while. The timeline as I worked it out for Toshi Rambo, for, for what it's worth, it was originally in Lion Lands. And then it was in the Crane, lands for, in the crane Hands for many, for many generations. And we don't know under what circumstances it changed hands at that point. And then the Lion retook it. And it was in lion hands for what is called three short generations, uh, which you could put around, I don't know, 60 to 80 years. How long is a short generation? Yeah, something like that. Well, I think, I think they're saying not the generations are short, but three is a short number of generations. Right. Well, the, the phrase used was three short generations. But yeah, yeah. Only 60 years. That's hardly any. Yeah. Three short generations. And then um, the crane retook it about uh, two and a half years ago. So that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so, th- so they're, they're both going, um, it's been asked for ages. You've only had it for a little while. And, no, no, no. We've had it for ages. And you've only had it for a little while. And so they're kind of doing the same thing with uh, Cute and Kikita, which is just hilarious to me. Right. Um so, at this point, it's interesting to me. Uchiaki knows that Kuden Kikita was blown up with Gaijin Pepper. Uh, he says, What mm. is respect for the laws of Rokugan when it was violated by the weapons of outsiders? And it's the crane who did it. Um, so, being violated by the weapons of outsiders has got to be the reference to Gaijin Pepper. But the main charge that he makes is that the crane destroyed Kuden Kikita. Uh, nobody is freaking mm. out. He's not freaking out that the crane committed sacrilege of some sort uh, by touching or using gaijin pepper or that a crane, you know, did. It's not, the emphasis is not on the gaijin pepper. It's on the destroying Kuten Kikita. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that that implies that gaijin pepper is dishonorable. It's against the law, as described. Yeah. But it's not, like, to the level where it's sacrilegious or tainted. It's not worse than destroying Kuten Kikita yeah, yeah. in the first place. He, uh, Ujiaki even thinks that some people would even feel sorry for Yoshi and understand potentially Crane blowing up their own castle uh, under the circumstances. So... Um, I, I, I thought I should mention that just because some people get really, like, f- think that Gaijin Pepper is, is as bad as Maho, or, like, even Maho isn't well, I mean, as bad as Maho is sometimes depicted <laughs> or described. Well, I, I mean, it must be said, it, it, it wasn't so much that Gaijin Pepper is tainted, is that it, it does somehow hurt or... or... Is, you know, it, it causes problems with the local kami is what I, is is my understanding. Well, that's never been um, asserted in New Five R. Certainly, not not in New Five R. Absolutely not. No. Although having said that, it, some of the question is um, how much does Ujiaki worry about these things as opposed to what normal people would worry about these things. Yeah, it's because they they talk. I mean, the the actual statement in court is you detonated our monument. Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting change, Mm -hmm. um, which I desperately hope doesn't mean people start insisting on having guns in rock and gun because I just no. It doesn't. Then never mind. That's my it's (laughs) it's still against the law. It's just it's not the same thing as as like horrible evil oni summoning or something and and. And I just wanted to yeah, yeah. distinguish that difference because it's still against the law. Nobody needs to rip out yeah, guns yeah. in their Rokugan unless they want to for their own individual Rokugan. It's allowed. It's not likely to show up, though there have been references to them um, in New 5R. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, just just don't necessarily think it automatically means, you know, knowing about it or anything means you're you're mm. gotta go get executed or something now 
Overall, his main charge is that what his goal is, Oji Aki's main goal, is that he's trying to get Yoshi to rule against the crane. He's trying to get Yoshi to condemn the crane for destroying Kuden Kikita and murdering his wife. That gives more sanction and more power to the lion side of the war. And plus it puts mm. Yoshi in an extended position where he's like, either he doesn't condemn yeah. the crane and looks biased, or he does condemn the crane and then the crane look bad. So that's the goal of all of his um, charging in and being explosive in court. So yeah, that is an interesting... So we now have a bit more idea of how it's how Gaijin Pepper is seen in Ron Gans. That's very interesting. Uh, Yoshi keeps uh, on the same order, remove line troops from Crane and Unicorn Lands, and then removes Uchiaki as ambassador. How very interesting. Yeah, the Imperial Legions are mostly so lions. So. a question of like how he's going to enforce that. Was he going to be using the Imperial Legions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, in theory, the lion are so terribly <laughs> loyal um, to the throne that they would do whatever they're told. But he's not the emperor's only yep. regent. So who- now uh, we have showed you he is being kept under guard uh, by the dragon. So the dragon, despite the fact that Yoshi is regent, it's the dragon that are really controlling the whole capital at this point. He hasn't been remanded. The crane don't have any military presence in the city. Um other than probably a few Yojimbo kind of thing. It's all it's all under the it's it's all all being controlled by the dragon. So keep it. Dragon clan coup. Right, so just uh kind of stepping away from, from cross references to previous uh stories for a moment. <laughs> uh we have some actual things that you can look at. We have an incense clock, which is measuring time in the coils of incense burned in an incense spiral. So that's a way, one of the ways that uh, time was measured. Uh, so you'd burn a stick of incense and you'd know how long it would take. I believe there are also candles that burned for a specific amount of time. That's another method of time telling. It's kind of interesting how he brings forth some tea here. He's, uh, Ujiaki is telling a story with tea. He brings bergamot, which is a favorite lion tea. We've talked about ber- bergamot before as uh, incense that, um, that uh, Matsusuko burns for um, Arasu. And rhubarb, which is apparently a scorpion favorite kind of tea. When he brings the tea that is both kinds of tea mingled together, basically Ujiaki is uh, suggesting in his tea that the lion and the scorpion work together, that they form an alliance. And Mm. then Shoju, in his response to the tea, says such an alliance, such a blend of tea, is unusual. Um, But then... Ujiaki says, given the status of the court, it would be a good tea, good alliance. And then Shoju says he's been out of the loop of the court. And then Ujiaki says that he is longing for spring. He is basically making Mm. uh, the crane dominance of the court the winter. Okay. And he is he is longing to remove the crane dominance of the court. And this is all a story he is telling with these two kinds of, of tea. Yeah. Uh, with the alliance. So that's the tea part of the story. And then they start talking gardening. <laughs> yeah, because this is now looking at uh, Hanakotoba, which is the language of flowers. One of the ones mentioned is Tsubaki, which is white camellia. Uh, Red camellia is a noble death due to how to f- the flowers fall. But white, as described, is waiting and patience. And it's also considered good luck, especially for men. So when a camellia falls, all right, it doesn't, the flower doesn't um, decay on the stem, mm. but it breaks off and falls down. And, and drops abruptly like that, the whole flower head. And it's, it's considered to be beheading itself. Right, yeah, yeah. It's so a very noble way of dying. Which is why it's, uh, the red camellia is, is a noble death. 
kind of unlucky um, <laughs> because mm. uh, because it's a noble death, which is great, but it's also mean dying. Yeah. Um, a white camellia, on the other hand, like I said, is, like you said, is like waiting for that. Also, it's it, it's lucky yeah. as opposed to the the red. There are also analogies here to Yoshi's white hair, which is the crane in that case. Uh, winter is also referenced near the snow because the winter is about to start happening. Uh, proposing to push the snow off the chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum is the imperial flower and the symbol of the throne and the empire, the emperor as a whole. So this is like pushing Yoshi off the throne. And then he talked about other flowers falling before the chrysanthemum and able to be straightened or being uprooted. Uh, if it's no longer fit to flourish. He's talking about destroying the crane. So pruning in this case is removing Yoshi and uprooted is the crane. And so <laughs> in theory, this um, very subtle discussion about gardening is in fact pretty explicitly laying out a, a plan. Mm -hmm. Now you, you'd have thought that the dragon guards would have been alert to this, but uh, it, very likely much like the code that was hidden in a scorpion letter not that long ago it has to be enough that we can understand it you know because we otherwise like if, if we had to be seasoned rockagani courtiers to understand this stuff uh then who who, who we, we we spending all our time doing that and not reading fiction so it has to be <laughs> has to work for the audience so we have to assume this was in fact a properly uh subtle conversation <laughs> yeah, but I really like the way. Yeah, the, the the way they were using the the language of flowers, and it's it's a nice example of how you could use that in a game. Absolutely, and it's not it's not too obvious. I think that he does go to to just talk about it overall. We ha do have another story coming out soon called "A Worthy Opponent," which kind of has Shoji's response to this. But yeah. you know. Yeah, I thought we could discuss, you know, what does, what does Ujiaki really want? Do we think Shoji will go along with it? And, you know, I think that, is Ujiaki really just a really bad courtier? <laughs> There's a moment where he thinks that uh, he, he, he's going in his head, he's thinking, oh, here, the language of flowers is good for something other than wooing women. Like, mm, are you just the oh, worst he's, courtier he's... ever? <laughs> <laughs> he's he's essentially wooing in a very real sense he is he is wooing uh shoju here um, not that far off <laughs> but yes he should he should he should honestly have been more aware of the fact that the, the language of flowers are used for all sorts of things so there you go yeah he does seem to be trying overall to be talking about um you know he, it's very obvious he wants Yoshi removed. He talks about knocking the snow off mm. the chrysanthemum, and the the crane in this idea are are the snow that is keeping the chrysanthemum down, keeping down yeah. the uh, em emperor in some fashion. Uh, and then he talks in this in it about uprooting the flowers that stand in his way if they are no longer fit yeah. to flourish. You mentioned that, and I think that that's. A, a good phrase to consider because um, uprooting a flower means, you know, removing not only the flower, but the whole, the whole plant, right? Mm. Um, and it seems like he's been very aggressive. He's been manipulating this whole thing with yeah. the marriage to Elsa and Sarnia and, uh, and you know, all, the, all the things he's done that you talked about earlier he is not just you know prowling around in lion territories he's not just talking about uh in my mind he's not just talking about taking back toshi rambo or something that you know has ancestrally been theirs that that, that doesn't yeah. sound like his agenda to me does it sound like his agenda to you like all the way along <laughs> i have i honestly have no idea what his agenda is other than cause mischief <laughs> but yeah, he does seem to. I think he's he's got his eyes are on a wider prize than just like securing the uh, the the current lion borders or anything like that. He does seem to have some um, wider ambitions. 
Yeah. So when when he says about uprooting the crane if they're no longer fit to flourish, it makes me think about you know survival of the fittest, right? Mm. Uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. he he may be getting to the point where he's he's a person, and this is a philosophy that has been in the lion at various times that you have to be strong, you have to prove your strength in order to survive. All right? Yeah. That the that respect for for strength. Uh and the crane may be weakened to the point where he thinks like they they're no longer f- they're long, longer fit to flourish. Uh they they shouldn't even be there anymore. And uh he yeah. You know, that could be the end goal. And in earlier stories, we do see Uji thinking just just that. I mean, that's why he blew up Kuten mm. Kikita. He, he saw what the lion were planning to do, were in process of as an existential threat. Um, so, you know, this is, a, this is a lot of maneuvering for, uh, for what uh, Uji yeah. Aki wants. So. We'll find out whether or not Shoju yep, yep. goes along with it. <laughs> we will. We will. We'll have a look at that. And um, there are more hints about what Ujiaki is up to in the next fiction, but we are going to have to get to that later. Yeah. I thought we could give a call out to our Court Games Network, including the L5R LCG podcast and our Live from Tokyo podcast called Tokyo of the Five Rings, and our two actual play role-playing podcasts, Crimson Gold Agonies and Fortune and Strife. Um, Also, our friends at D20 Radio, who do lots of podcasts for other FFG and other games for you to check out. Our content is funded by the Community Discord Patreon, which supports our editing costs, as well as our website, where we have longer-term articles, summaries of our podcasts, RPG tools and resources, and more. We also have our Patreon. For our patrons, we will have special bonus content like Adventure Seeds, early access to our actual play podcasts, and more. Um, there's a good note there from Sebastian, who I wanted to call out as... You know, as we start a new year, as our um, he is our editor for Port Games, and he is also um, the host for uh, the Court G- Games or the L5R Community Discord. Uh, he has a nice New Year's note to up on the po- uh, up on Patreon for everybody to check out with our plans yeah. for the next year. So you can find us online at courtgamespod.com. On Twitter, we are twitter.com slash courtgamespod. And on Patreon, we are patreon.com slash courtgames. That's it for us this week. This is Kikiti Kaori. May the fortunes favor you. And I've been Korva. And until we meet again, keep your jade handy.